Secretary calls. <laughs> yeah, so if we could just have a, a round of applause of that. Okay, any more questions? Yeah, at the back. Thanks very much. Uh, two questions about uh, water purity. So, um, you know, in the presentation we heard that uh, the water purity meets the kind of the World Health Organization standards. But uh, in Hong Kong, a lot of people still won't drink water out of the tank. So, um, you know, how are we in terms of, you know, other developed nations? How far off are we on in regard to that? And kind of linked to that, um, uh, babies, you mentioned, uh, you know, leading technologies out there, but they're expensive. And there is a sense that um, you know when it comes to public works, there's a sense, you know, there's a tendency to go for low cost. So how do you, you know, how does how do you kind of take the latest technology as, and at the same time, um, you know, the, kind of the, the, the push towards kind of keep costs low? So how, how do you manage that? Oh, maybe maybe I can uh, answer both. <laughs> so I can, uh, for the first one, uh, basically the treatment process guarantee up to the point of connection to individual buildings. That is something we know for sure. That will go build a well-held uh, organization standard. What is lacking is the quality or, and the conditions of the inside service. And we have actually promoted a scheme, what we call quality water supply for buildings. And if buildings subscribe uh, to that kind of scheme, they have to undertake regular maintenance and cleaning of the inside surface, including the water tanks. And they have to submit some test data for us to verify it. So in a way, uh, basically you can say, well, for buildings who bear such a uh, certificate, theoretically, the water is safe to drink from tap. And in fact, it should be encouraged. But I would say, in fact, well, they would need a second generation of that quality pursuant scheme. A, we are now extending the coverage. It hasn't yet covered all the buildings. Most of the new buildings are subscribed to that one. We have a problem in getting penetration into the older sectors, all right? In particular, those small buildings, well, those uh, do, do not have uh, incorporate owners or good management companies, etc. We are doing that. And once we get our penetration sufficiently, then we will actually hope that we will raise the standard further so to provide further assurance. But of course, well, I think that uh, one thing that you must not well, the, uh, basically well, disregard is the old Chinese wisdom of drink boiled water. <laughs> well, I think they, they, our, our predecessor must have learned a lot of bitter experience when they come to that one. So somehow you have to ensure well, if the inside surface deliver water in, the, well, the, maintain the quality of water. And then somehow we have to reverse that philosophy. As for the second question, uh, cost is one of the issues. But the other thing is that uh, the, is the concern of energy. Uh, uh, well, the previous mention about the desalination part, and because of time, he hasn't mentioned the last bullet point. Desalation at the moment consumed more energies than any other treatment process. Uh, but the future is uh, looking bright, in a way, because with so many pioneer companies who are working on that one, uh, they understand the focus is to cut energy consumption. They understand the focus is to use as much well, the green energy as possible, solar energy or wind turbine, whatever. They, and and uh, technology is advancing. And in a way, well, to put myself as uh, well, the director of the water supplies department, what I need to do is to get myself ready on planning aspect, on land allocation aspect, so when the costs come down, and when we need the technology, and when we need the plan, we can bring it in within the shortest possible time span. Uh, if you have a green field site for building a desalination plant, if you go around the world asking those for proprietary suppliers like Hyflux or Kepler, they say can, they can build it uh, within two years. All right, so if you get everything ready, when the technologies come down to a reasonable level, of saving and energy saving, and hopefully as also as a well, the well, a reasonable cost, then you we can bring that in very quickly. 
So I, I think uh, maybe people respond to supplement further on the second one. I think for the, can you hear me? I think for the uh, drinking water, main difference between Hong Kong with a lot of high rise building uh, against the, the Western country with, with all this uh, single story rock and so on. Uh, in those places, the water is fed directly to the tank. So there's no immediate store, intermediate storage there. There's no source of contamination in between. So people can drink water direct. I mean, my daughter is in Melbourne. Uh, when I'm back there, I mean, personally, I just turn over and drink water. Of course, my wife, being a traditional lady, uh, <laughs> one, boiling water. <laughs> if you look at the history of water treatment, I think in the Western countries, it's more at once in providing water treatment to the uh, citizens. And therefore, uh, they're, they're more accustomed to relying on the treatment alone. Whereas in, in, in this part of the world, uh, conversion of, of clean water is coming very late. So our father, our grandfather, and so on, they rely on boiling water right, to, to keep, keep themselves safe. And that is why cryptosporidium and dry day is not an issue in Hong Kong in this part of the world. Because the water is being boiled all the parasites be killed. Okay. Yes. I am just a question about the purity of the water. Yeah, and okay, I mean everyone expecting to 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 um to boil the water to drink, okay. But I mean we use water differently in our daily life. I mean, let's say to shower or to, to wash a car or whatever. I mean, but we don't need to have the same standard of the, of the water quality. Is that possible to um, divide a different grade into the water quality so that we can use a, a less, yeah, yeah, some sort of yeah, idea, yeah. Well, it's absolutely possible. Uh, but of course, well, we have a history to, well, that's sort of a here too, in a way. Uh, basically, you would need a separate system. You need a separate system. At the moment, we have already have two. One for portable water supply, one for most of the places, sea water for fresh water. And you need a third one. The third one is actually what you mentioned, well, a lower grade water for other purposes, like washing the floor, like well, the irrigating plant, etc. And that, what, uh, that is an idea that we promote under the total water management strategies, what we call a grey water reuse. So uh, in, in a way, the, 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 the way we see the thing is, well, the most economic approach of that particular issue is to promote the ideas of individual developments of building, high rise in particular, to set up their own grey water reuse systems. Uh, if you visit the Hong Kong uh, well, Productivity Council, they have actually have a pilot scheme with the city, city university uh, down in the Festival Walk, next to Festival Walk, where they actually will take part of a basement, putting in a very simple well, water treatment plant, basically a filtration plant with uh, sufficient storage. And they clean the water from uh, the sink uh, from bathroom, etc., and then turned it into a lower grade water for use for other purposes than drinking. So, in fact, well, the, for all our uh, water reclamation plants that we mentioned as pilot study, like the Longping one and also the Xiangshui and Setuhui one, that are wastewater recycling. That means you actually take the toilet water for recycling. So, it needs a more well, the intensive treatment process. The cost is high, something around $7 uh, 